The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low the winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of god the gospel of the lord For what do you yearn? About 40 years ago, before I joined the monastery, on one Christmas Eve, I went with my father to warm up the car before our family would go to Mass together. He said to me, there is no place I would rather be right now. At the time, I simply thought it was an expression of contentment, his way of saying that being with family sure beats four years in the army, stationed away from home, four Christmases in a row. But now these many years later, I think it wasn't so much an expression of contentment as it was something more like, I am at peace with my yearnings. At the time, Dad would have been in his 60s, and he surely knew that his family was breaking up in the sense that his sons and daughter would not be living at home. He knew that he was closer to death than to birth. He was at a point in life when meeting the Creator wasn't all that distant. To go to Mass with people you love, to honor that inner yearning for God, for the Savior. What more was there for him in the moment? At the time of John the Baptist, Israel knew its yearnings. Protestant commentator Alexander McLaren writes, what more needed to be said? to prove how the ancient glory of Israel had faded than that they were under the rule of a delegate as Pilate, of such an emperor as Tiberius, that the bad brood of Herod's descendants divided the sacred land between them, and that the very high priesthood was illegally administered so that such a pair as Annas and Caiaphas held it in some irregular fashion between them. It was clearly high time for John to come and for the word of God to come to John. In other words, what McLaren is saying is that Israel was in desperate straits and it needed to hear God's word from the Baptist 
just as the discouraged Philippians needed to hear it from Paul, and just as we, in the midst of pandemic, need to hear the word of God from whatever good source it may come. In the reading from Baruch, personified Jerusalem, is presented as yearning for the return of her children. Jerusalem, the city left desolate when its leaders and many of its inhabitants were sent to Babylon. Baruch tells her, take off your robe of mourning and misery, led away on foot by their enemies, your children left you, but God will bring them back to you. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground. What strikes me about this image of lowered mountains and raised valleys is that it emphasizes God's work in restoration. As one writer said, the metaphor is that the geography will be adjusted so that the exiles have easier travel, returning from the distant land. By contrast, the message of repentance in the gospel uses a similar image, emphasizing that those called to repentance are to do the work. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight God's paths. There it is God's people who must prepare the way so that God is able to travel in, to enter. What changes do I, we, need to make in interior geography toward social justice or openness of heart so that God is able to enter our lives? Whether we emphasize God's work or our work, it is important to see the parallel there with desire, God's desire for us, our desire for God. If you are like I am, when you think of salvation or Savior, you think of being saved from sin and saved from death. Advent and Christmas music is full of those ideas. In addition to that, I like the Japanese characters and words for Savior, Sukuinushi. Yes, the word conveys a sense of rescuing leader, but the characters express desire as well. Literally, a yearning for the helping hands of a master. To celebrate Eucharist, the Savior, with persons you love. To realize that you are greatly loved by God. To be willing to discern and remove obstacles to God. To realize that life is changing for you and all around you, and yet still be at peace with yearning for God. What more is there? <laughs>